A year ago, I was getting back to art after a very long interruption in my life and at the time I realized that in order to be able to make the kind of art that I love and that I could be proud of, I really needed to study the fundamentals. So a year ago, I subscribed to New Masters Academy, an online art school, and at the time I thought that since I wasn't a beginner, I probably wouldn't need more than three to six months to complete the entire Drawing Foundations module and that once it would be done, I would be completely trained and ready to work as a professional illustrator. So that was the plan and that's really not how it happened. So I'm going to take this opportunity to tell you about the exact classes that I've been taking in order and to show you most of my assignments, most of my projects. Before I jump into it, I just want to tell you once more that I wasn't a complete beginner when I joined New Masters Academy. I think it is a great place to start for beginners, but it really wasn't my case. I had been drawing for most of my life, so I had a lot of experience and I think I had some very good optical skills and eye-hand coordination and I was already able to produce nice looking images and I had even sold some artwork. So definitely not a beginner but I always felt like there was something missing in my art. I was basically I was able to copy very nicely with very nice rendering. I wasn't able to go beyond my references. I felt a bit trapped by my references and limited and I had a feeling that masterful artworks that I looked at, the people who did them had something that I didn't have and it's when I realized that it was probably the fundamentals that I decided to subscribe to New Masters Academy and start the journey I've been on for an entire year now. So I just wanted to say that I wasn't a beginner when I started, so you don't compare your progress to mine because it's really not the idea of this video. I want to show you just my journey, just what is possible, but keep in mind that every artistic journey, every studying journey is different, everyone has different strengths and weaknesses and things that clicks with their brain and things that are a lot more difficult to grasp. Okay, so now that it's said, in May last year I joined New Masters Academy, I went to the website and I subscribed. At the time I took the lowest subscription, so I think it's the equivalent of the library subscription right now, so it's the lowest tier. I had access to pre-recorded classes and that was it. No live classes, no group coaching, no library, none of that, just the pre-recorded classes. And even today it's still what I recommend if you want to know if New Masters Academy is for you, you don't have to go with a very high subscription, you can just give it a try with the lowest one, see during a month if you like it, and that's kind of the mindset that I had when I joined. So I took the very basic subscription and I started following the classes right away. So I started with Drawing Foundations 1, which is still the first class in the curriculum today. It's a class that goes over a lot of drawing techniques and very basic concepts like measuring, values, volumes, the laws of light, thumbnails. You end this class with a still life. And a lot of what was in that class, I felt like I didn't know about in the sense that I didn't, I hadn't mastered it, but I had some idea about. None of it was completely new to me, but it was definitely taught in a way that made it a lot clearer. And having to do the assignments was really what made a difference for me and what allowed me to start to really, really learn those fundamentals. But when I started, I have to admit that for the first maybe three lessons, four lessons of the class, I wasn't doing the assignments super seriously, so if the assignment file 
told me to do like five still life objects. Sometimes I wouldn't do more than three because I felt like that was enough and I wasn't a beginner and I didn't need to do the entire assignment. But then I learned that there is what they call the interactive track and that if you submit your assignments, you can get feedback and critics on it and you can have TIs tell you if you're ready to move on to the next lesson or if they think that you need to spend a little bit more time studying this lesson. And I really liked the idea of having this extra structure and support and having someone experienced looking at my work and telling me what was working and what wasn't working. But in order to have access to the interactive feedback at New Masters Academy, you have to start from the very first assignment of the very first class and you can't skip any. You have to do everything in the recommended order. So I had to go back and complete the few assignments that I hadn't done very seriously, so I did that. And I think this is when it really started for me, because if I had kept going the way I started, just doing the assignments kind of my way, kind of not completely, I definitely wouldn't have learned as much as I did, and I wouldn't have stuck with it, I think. Having this feedback, having this structure has been very important to me. I was also taking Drawing 1. It's a class that's a little bit different because it's not a video class, it's a class that was available for free on Discord. Right now it is still available for free, so if you're not subscribed to New Masters Academy, you can join their Discord and check it out. It's probably not going to stay free forever, but right now it still is. And alongside those two, I also took Fundamentals of Drawing and Perspective with Rene Wang and Fundamentals of Observational Drawing with Ilya Miroshny. So I was taking these three at the same time and I could get feedback on all of my assignments. And it was a very, very enjoyable time for me from May to August, when I was taking the very first classes, which is right now the part one of the Drawing Foundations module in the current curriculum. I was, it was refreshing a lot of concepts and ideas that I had some ideas about. For example, I knew what perspective was. I had some idea about how one point, two point, three points perspective works, but I never studied it seriously with assignments and with such a clear and complete way of explaining it. So I absolutely loved the first classes. I know that a lot of people think that fundamentals are tedious, that it's something annoying that you have to go through and then you can move on to the fun stuff. But that's really not how I see it and I think that's not the most helpful way of thinking about them. I loved doing it. It was, you know, at the time when I was drawing my pages of cubes for fundamentals of observational drawing, yeah, maybe I was a little bored, maybe I had to power through and to listen to some music, but really I was learning a lot, it was also kind of relaxing to have to do these assignments, these apparently simple exercises for which I don't have to think about being creative, what I want to show, what I want to express, finding an idea. It's very technical and there is something liberating about it. For me, I didn't really know what I wanted to draw at the time, so I was focusing heavily on coursework and doing a lot of it, and during my first month I moved pretty fast um, in the first classes. I think I've been doing Drawing Foundations 1 in like two weeks. I don't remember exactly for the other classes, but I was taking about a month to complete a class because I was really focused on coursework, I was enjoying it and the second class of the curriculum, the one with Rene Wong, Fundamentals of Drawing and Perspective, was especially enjoyable for me. All those three classes about fundamentals, they 
teach you the same concepts, but every time it is repeated, it's in a slightly different way and in a slightly deeper way, in a sense. And it's having access to all of these different approaches that for me made the concepts even stronger. But I still have my favorite approach and I especially enjoy the fundamentals of drawing and perspective with René Wang. All of the class was amazing. Um, I made a video about New Masters Academy previously. I have in the thumbnail, I am holding, you don't see my face, it's just me holding a big still life on toned paper. It's a charcoal still life of a teapot that I did for this class. So what I've been learning with these first classes was first a refresher on what I would call academic drawing techniques. So how to measure, how to see and compare angles, how to be as accurate as possible, how to find your final line through enveloping and using plumb lines and all of these things um, that I had heard about but I had never seriously practiced. I also started to learn about perspective in a more structured way and to be able to see it around me and to start using it for objects. For example, I had kind of a breakthrough about ellipses uh, thanks to a PDF by Joshua Jacobo, the founder of New Masters Academy. And I also learned about values a little bit, thumbnails, organizing my values and all of these things I'm still working on. It's not something that you learn once and you're done with it. I don't do the exact assignments that I had during this first month, but I still, every time I draw, I am actively using everything I learned during these classes. So it's not something tedious that you have to do before you move on to the fun stuff. It is what makes the fun stuff enjoyable and something that you're going to keep using for the entirety of your life. Around August is when I started to slow down a little bit on coursework. I think it is when I understood that my previous conception of New Masters Academy was completely wrong and that there was absolutely no way for me to do the entire Drawing Foundations module in three to six months, that it's simply not possible, that it would take me a lot more time. I was getting more and more involved in New Masters Academy and in the classes. Also, something important that happened for me during this time is that around June or July happened the 10th anniversary of New Masters Academy. And they released a very, very interesting offer they called the four-year program. That was a plan that was um, at a very interesting price where you could basically have access to everything New Masters Academy has to offer, so pre-recorded classes, live classes, group coaching, the entire library, and some extra on top of it. And that was a plan that would last four years. Unfortunately, it's no longer available. It was only available for a limited time, but that's when I took the subscription and I upgraded to a more complete subscription at New Masters Academy to have access to basically everything as I have now. If you go to the website right now, it's the closest subscription is the live one. The plan that I have is no longer available. Um, I remember reading uh, the page with all of the details and the price and thinking that was a big commitment, four years, it's very long and I I hesitated a lot, but I took it and I'm very, very glad I did. I think four years is a very nice time frame for me to have time to do the Drawing Foundations module and explore a little bit more. Around August, I was slowing down a little bit, uh, feeling a little bit tired because of the heat, because I took a vacation and it completely broke my routines. So when I got back from it, it I struggled a little bit to get back to it. Uh, but then from September to December, I was taking what was at the time the part two of the Drawing Foundations module. And that's the part that had three classes as well that were all about 
the human figure um, and gesture. So the classes I took at the time were Drawing with Force with Mike Matesi, Constructive Head Drawing 1 with Steve Houston and Dynamic Gesture Drawing with Glenn Vilpo. All of them were actually, I wouldn't say difficult because it has a bad connotation to it, but I would say challenging and transformative as well, because when something is challenging, usually it's that you have a lot to learn from it. And that wasn't an easy study time for me. I was definitely slower than when I first joined in May. And the classes I was taking were difficult for me, challenging, especially drawing with force and dynamic gesture drawing, because these two classes are in the curriculum when you are introduced to gesture. And gesture, I think, is something that's very difficult to teach and very difficult to learn because it's not a concept that you understand as much as you feel it. It's a time when I made very, very massive progress because I had a very, very vague idea of gesture. I thought that gesture was random, free-flowing, curvy lines. And I'm very glad that I took drawing with force because that's when I was introduced to gesture seriously for the very first time. And Mike Mattes's way of explaining gesture is very practical. It's a very simple, easy to understand, easy to apply formula that really clicked with me. Once I learned about it in this class, I became a little bit obsessed in a good way about gesture and I started seeing it around me, not only in figures, because you learn it through figure drawing, but it's not just in the human figure, it's in everything. And I started seeing it in plants and in clouds and in beautifully designed objects and patterns. And I remember realizing that the patterns that I love, I'm a big fan of Art Nouveau patterns and William Morris's patterns, that they all had a lot of beautiful gesture and that's what sets them apart from copies and imitations that don't work. Previously, I could see that there was something different about them, but I didn't exactly know what. And when I learned about gesture, I understood that that was what it was. What made it difficult for me is that it's a class for which you have to make a lot of drawings. Uh, it's a lot about repetition and practice and the assignments ask you to do a lot of pages. And it's all very quick sketches, very quick drawing. And it's not what I enjoy the most. It's not drawings that are meant to look beautiful. So I didn't get a lot of satisfaction from the assignments that I had to make. That made it more difficult for me because I like to enjoy what I'm doing in the end. Um, but at the same time, I took constructive head drawing with Steve Houston. And this is a class that I absolutely loved you know, from the start until the very end. Usually when I say that I liked a class, if you had asked me when I was taking the class, I probably would have said that it was very difficult. <laughs> um, but once it's done, suddenly it's amazing and I loved it. But I remember clearly that when I was taking constructive head drawing, I was loving it while I was taking it. I really loved Steve Houston's teaching. I loved the assignments that I was doing. I really took my time with them and yeah, I, I loved them. These are still amongst my favorite sketchbook pages from the time. And right after that, I took dynamic gesture drawing, which is the first class you have with Glenn Vilpu in the curriculum, if you follow the order. And I think it's been the most difficult class for me, but it's also during this class that I made the most progress. I don't remember exactly in which week, but I had... It was difficult. I was really struggling with it to the point when I even considered giving up at some point. But I stuck with it and I had at some point kind of a break of two to three weeks. And when I got back to it, and I drew along Glenn, and then I did the assignments. I had 
something fell into place and it became better. I, I was about to say it became easier, but it didn't. But my results became a little bit better. And so that was encouraging for me to keep going and to finish the class. It still took me a very long time. I took three months to do this class, which isn't much. A lot of people take longer than this. But for me, since I had gotten used to doing class in a month, it, it felt like a lot and it felt like it was never going to end. By the time I reached the end of this class, there was a change in the curriculum and it became optional, basically, because I had already taken drawing with force. I didn't have to complete dynamic gesture drawing anymore. It was okay for me to give it up and go to the next class and I could still get feedback. But I was like a week or two weeks away from finishing it, so I decided to power through and I'm very glad that I did. So yeah, um, other things happened from September to December. I started to attend group coaching sessions. Since I took the four-year program in June or July, I had access to group coaching, which I didn't before. But I took a very long time to start attending the sessions because I felt... Well, <laughs> it's a very simple reason. Um, I felt extremely self-conscious about my English and I was afraid that they wouldn't understand anything I was saying and I felt shy, basically. I wasn't afraid to show my work as much as I was to show my voice. <laughs> so it, it, it sounds silly because I was already doing YouTube videos and apparently you understand what I say, but that's how I felt and that's the reason why I didn't go to group coaching until the month of October. But I started going to group coaching and submitting my work for feedback and I think for me group coaching has become more and more valuable as I keep submitting pieces to the same coaches and slowly they start to understand who I am and what I do and have an idea about my strengths and weaknesses and having tailored feedback from people who know what they are talking about is very useful. So I try to submit pretty often right now at least once a week and I started that in the month of October. I also did a few very important pieces for me. In October, I was doing a still life. It was for an assignment that is specific to the four-year program. So it's not for a class specifically, but it's for the entire program. And we had an assignment that was to do a still life project themed around fall or Halloween. So... For me, it felt like a more personal project because we had some references, we had some guidance, but a lot of it was up to us. And it's the first time that I worked my composition this way and I was also using everything that I had learned during the first classes at New Masters Academy. And it felt great. It felt very empowering and sometimes because the assignments are so short and so targeted to a specific skill, you don't really realize how it adds up and how, how much you gain from them until you do a bigger project where you can really recall everything you've learned and start using it in a more personal way. And for me, I think this is where a lot of the learning happens, but also a lot of the confidence in what I've learned. And this is with these kinds of projects that I can really measure my progress. So I did this and another piece that has been very important for me happened during the month of December. So they had a challenge at New Masters Academy for Christmas that was to make an artwork on the theme of a gingerbread house. So I made a big cardboard gingerbread house with white patterns and stained glass. And what makes it a very special project is that it was a challenge with a prize. And I've been very lucky to win the prize, which was a pass for a workshop. So it's an online workshop and I could basically choose any workshop that I wanted. So it was an amazing prize um, and I've been using it since. So I will tell you about the workshop that I took in April a little bit later in the video. 
And so we arrive to the last part of this video, which is from January to April. Right now we are in May, so it's right before now. Um, in January, I was again kind of in a slump or trying to get out of a slump. That was dynamic gesture drawing. I think I finished it in January, so it took me a long time. I felt stuck with it. I was also waiting for the new curriculum to be released. I don't remember exactly when it became live, but it. I was using it as a way to procrastinate on dynamic gesture drawing and I felt stuck. I was in a slump. So in January, I took dynamic gesture drawing, which I finished around this time. I was also taking my first live class at New Masters Academy. That was Mastering Color Fundamentals with Bill Perkins. It was amazing. Um, I did it in gouache, which isn't my favorite medium, but I made a ton of progress in gouache and a ton of progress with color because it was my first time taking a class that was specifically about color and I learned a lot. It was amazing, um, but I wasn't working on coursework that much. I was taking it pretty slow, slowly finishing dynamic gesture drawing, also taking this live class on the side. And what I've been doing mostly in January is that I wanted to get back in kind of this new year spirit, to get back into the habit of drawing and creating every day. So I started a few very interesting things. Um, I started going to live drawing sessions nearby. Uh, there is an atelier where I live where they offer weekly live drawing sessions, so I started attending these. We had a very nice weather, so I also started to go draw outside. I started going to museums and draw at the museum. I also went just in my city to draw some buildings and statues and a few times I went to a greenhouse there is in a park, it's Parc de la Tête d'Or, where I drew some plants and I loved it. Um, it was a very exciting time for me because when I had joined New Masters Academy and started drawing from life for some assignments, I hated it. It felt awkward, my measurements were wrong, everything felt off and it felt a lot more difficult and less enjoyable than drawing from photographs. But in January, when I started doing it again, it suddenly, I don't know how, but it became a lot easier and extremely enjoyable and I started to love drawing from life a lot more than I love drawing from photographs. So it was amazing. I also went to a fun event um, that was a portraiture event. It's a weekly thing that happens. I only went once where artists come together. It was at a coffee shop. And basically uh, we take turns and draw each other by turns. <laughs> so I drew a lot of portraits from life and I also had my portrait drawn from life, which is very weird. It's weird to be looked at so intensely for 10 minutes, but it was a lot of fun overall and I hope I find the time to go there again. So January was all about this. And in February, I decided to start working on the courses again very intensely and I gave myself a goal to finish the drawing foundations module before the summer. I can tell you right now that it's not going to happen. We are in May and I am... Um, I've made some very good progress in the module but it's not going to be finished this summer, probably more like next autumn. But anyway, I, I set myself that goal and from February to April I've been working way too much actually. I think in three months I completed as many classes as I had previously since I joined. Um, so I completed, I started and completed stress-free sketching with Sheldon Borenstein, uh, introduction to landscape drawing with Steve Houston, elements of traditional composition with Glenville Poole and Perspective One with Eric Olson, which is Perspective One on its own is a very intense class with a lot of work. You have to copy many, many, many diagrams and it's 
it's intense. Uh, the assignments are intense as well. And yeah, it's, it was a lot of work. It's also at this time that I stopped recording YouTube videos because I really wanted to focus on my studies. So I haven't been recording a video since January. Because of this, a few maybe went out after I stopped recording uh, because I had planned them, but I really focused 100% on my studies and I worked too much. I completed anywhere between five to eight. I think my most productive week, I completed eight lessons in a week, which I, I don't recommend to anyone. Um, but I really wanted to make progress and I don't regret going that fast, especially with the perspective class, because I was motivated and there is something very rewarding when you feel that you're making progress. And I was definitely making a lot of progress. But at this time, I stopped going to live drawing sessions. I stopped almost completely drawing outside and I didn't have any personal practice because classes were taking all of my time and I really, really focused on it. So I did this from February to March and I wanted to stop by the end of March because in April happened the workshop that I had chosen for my prize. I decided to take Miles Yoshida's watercolor portraiture workshop. So I completed all of my classes from part five of the Drawing Foundations module before that. So I could start the workshop on a clean plate because it was an intensive workshop. It was four days, six hours a day, uh, plus assignments on top if you don't follow along the instructor, which I didn't because I needed all of my brain to focus on what I was doing and to see what he was doing. But I learned a lot. It made me appreciate watercolor a lot more. And I think I learned to process in watercolor that suits my natural tendencies and what I love more than what I had been trying previously. And the piece that I did for this workshop, it was a self-portrait. I didn't record the painting process because I wasn't making any videos at the time, but I'm going to show you the portrait and how it turned out. And it's a piece that I'm very proud of. It has mistakes, it has things that I would like to do differently right now, but I'm still extremely happy about the way the painting part turned out and I loved doing it and it's one of these projects as I said like the autumn still life in which I've been able to really recall and use things that I had learned previously and that gave me a lot of satisfaction and a clearer sense of where I was and what I had learned and what I also still have to learn. So a big piece for me and a big moment in my journey at New Masters Academy. And yeah, from April to now, I've been taking it a little bit slower again because I, I think I've been working too much at the beginning of this year and it's I'm getting a little bit tired <laughs> right now. So I decided to take it a little bit slower. I am right now in part six of the Drawing Foundations module. So this is the final part of the module. I have three classes to take, um, two that I can choose and one that is mandatory. The mandatory one is finding your artistic voice and visual style with Bill Perkins and Steve Houston. It's a class that I keep for the very end because it's a very short one and I think it's going to be a nice class to finish the module on. So I'm keeping it for later. And the two classes that I chose right now, I may take some more in the future, but the two that I chose for now are Dynamic Sketching with Charles Yu, which I'm taking right now. I am on week four. And the one I will take right after this is Introduction to Inking with Miles Yoshida, because I love his teaching and his artwork, and I really want to learn ink and I think it is a very very beautiful and demanding and delicate medium <laughs> that I want to learn so that's my plan and this video is getting pretty long so I'm going to keep it short for the before after but I promised it I have selected a few pieces for this before after one gouache piece one figure drawing piece and one charcoal. I want to start with the gouache one because 
as I said, I took a workshop at an art school a year ago in April before I joined New Masters Academy. And this is what I did on the first day in the workshop. That was my first time using gouache as an adult and I, I think I did pretty well. I'm quite happy about what I did. Um, but I was struggling with doing soft edges in gouache, which is still difficult. It's not an easy medium for this. And I, I learned a lot. So <laughs> this is my piece from April last year. And recently I was taking a live class with Rene Wang, which is gouache explorations. And this is what I did for the second week. So it's a still life that I did from a photo reference that I took myself um, in my living room. <laughs> and it's, yeah, I, I think I made solid progress. I don't know if these images are what shows it the most, but I definitely feel a lot more confident in my choice of colors, in my mixing, in my handling of paint, in the paint texture that I have to choose and how gouache reactivates. So I learned a lot, I've been practicing it quite a bit and despite the fact that it's not my favorite medium. Then there is my charcoal pieces. This is what I did on the second day at the workshop. We drew from life again from casts that they had at the school and we could do either the Venus, I think it's Venus, I'm not sure, or the head of Nefertiti. And I decided to do both and I did a bad job, I think. Um, at both, but it was my first time using charcoal. It's a medium I didn't like and I still don't like, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I, I tried my best and it was very difficult and I don't like what I did. And the piece I want to compare it with is one that I did a while ago, actually, because it was during the second class I took at New Masters Academy. So it was probably around June. This is the still life that I did for Fundamentals of Drawing and Perspective, the one that I hold in my New Masters Academy review <laughs> thumbnail. It's a piece that I'm pretty proud of um, and I definitely had a far better understanding of charcoal when I did that one than when I did my first cat's drawings and the final ones. The third day at the workshop we drew from life, from a live model. It was my first time and it was very difficult. <laughs> I remember trying my best but it was the idea was to show us a lot of different techniques and exercises and we didn't really have time to learn a lot in a day. It was more about practice and discovery. But I tried my best and in the afternoon we did a long pause. So it was probably three hours, at least two hours. So I don't have a piece that is two hours long to compare it to right now because it's not something I've done. But actually in 20 minutes, I can make something that I like better than what I did that day. That was a very long video. I hope that it gave you a better idea of what a year of study at New Masters Academy can look like. If you liked this one, I think you may like my review of New Masters Academy. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a good time with me. Stay creative and I will see you in the next one.